Good evening, and welcome to Wednesday night Lenten services here at Our Saviors. We're going to start off the evening with an opening song, a hymn, How Great Thou Art. So please stand and join us in singing. Welcome to this uh, midweek Wednesday Lenten worship. We are so glad you are here. Welcome to those of you who are in person. Welcome to those of you who are watching online. Uh, we started the night really wonderfully. We had a moving presentation from Tiger McClune, for, uh, particularly for our young people and their parents, and a time for conversation. And now we're all joining together uh, in worship at this time. So for tonight, the songs will be on the screen, like we just experienced, and then the Holden Evening Prayer Service, that is in your worship booklet, so you'll want to have that handy. We are going to reuse these each week, so you could help us out by handing them to an usher on your way out the door as you leave today. Um, communion will be celebrated tonight. It will be in your places. So if you didn't pick up a communion kit on your way in and you want one, you could wave your hand now. The ushers will bring you one. Uh oh, do we have a whole front row that needs them? 
Big basket in the front. Big baskets down front. Um, or you could jump up and get one yourself, too, if you want. Uh, and then finally, our offering tonight, you can place your offering in the baskets as you leave. I think those are all of our announcements. So uh, I will turn it over to our musicians. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no, no darkness, darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the, the day, day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Singing falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the heavens, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light. And wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heaven splendor. Every dancing star of night Make us shine with gentle justice Let us each reflect your light Mighty God of all creation Gentle Christ who lights our way Loving Spirit of salvation Lead us on to endless day God be with you all, and, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of our creation. Let my prayer rise up like incense. 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Tonight's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains had wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you done with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbered about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood as he was getting into the boat. The man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might go with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we now have a video by Paul Oman. Uh, he is a pastor and a painter, and he's going to interpret this scripture for us. Let's watch. Thank you. 
Here I was, sentenced, you might say. A life sentence, not of my own doing. Something, someone, some power had taken hold of me. And that was it. My people would have nothing to do with me. I was shunned, banished, expelled, naked, and chained. Yet all of the chains I broke. Let me tell you about my life and how I came to wear these chains. What it was like to be an outcast from my own community and my own family. I cannot remember when it started, but I must have been about 13 years old. I would do things, things that would upset people. I never knew why I did it, but I couldn't help it. As time went on, I developed a reputation as a troublemaker. People stayed away from me. No one wanted to be my friend. And if they did, their parents often told them they couldn't spend time with me. It's amazing how easy it is to get into trouble when everyone expects that that is what you will do. I was blamed for just about everything that happened. People said I was demon-possessed. Others said I was just evil, but what did it matter? Nobody wanted anything to do with me. And before long, even my own family turned their backs on me. People would stare at me when I walked the streets. One day, a group of fed-up villagers found me on the edge of town. They were going to teach me a lesson. So they grabbed me and roughed me up until I couldn't even stand. They left me there to die, feeling good that they had done everyone a favor. This is how I ended up here. I dragged myself to one of the caves, the tombs, along the Sea of Galilee. Here I was, living, if you could call it that, among the dead. This was my home now. Nobody, and I mean nobody, would have anything to do with me. They were afraid of me. I can see it now, but then, it was all out of my control. There I was. I mean, there we were. <laughs> oh, you're wondering what I mean by we. Well, there was one of me, that's true, but there were many of them. The demons, that is, within me. A legion of them, 5,000 or more, tormenting me so much so that I could no longer help myself. They had me right where they wanted me. Then one day, following a powerful storm, I saw a boat in the distance. It was coming toward my shore. Nobody ever came here. People knew about this place, and they stayed away. The boat landed, and a man stepped out. Just one of them, though there were several in the boat. Immediately, the demons took hold within my body like I've never felt before, and I ran. I rushed toward this man, flailing and shouting wildly. When he sternly and loudly spoke a word to me, with his calm, unaltered presence. Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. I dropped to the ground and shouted, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I am desperately asking you, by God, do not torment me. Jesus then asked me my name. And from within me came my reply. My name is Legion, for we are many. A legion was an army of over 5,000 Roman soldiers. And this is what it felt like inside of me. Soldiers marching, ordering, wrenching me day and night. But no, 
I couldn't bear the thought of a change. I begged Jesus to leave me alone, to not send my demons away. They had become who I was, and I was determined to hold on. My demons, however, knew that a power greater than them was before them, and they were terrified. So they sought a way to preserve themselves, manipulating their way as they always did. Send us into the pigs, they shouted. Why would Jesus listen to the demons and grant them their request? I wasn't sure, but he did, and into the pigs they went. But what I saw next was unbelievable. Jesus was not done with them. With another word, he ordered the demon-possessed pigs to run off the steep bank and into the sea. And they did, to their death, drowned. What was this? What was going on? I felt calm, faintly remembering this feeling from years ago before my life went out of control. I didn't know what to think or what to do as I had just witnessed firsthand all of these things take place, and all of it with just a word from Jesus. And now what? I was free, free from this bondage, unchained, unbound, not by my own power. Those swine herders, though, you should have seen the look on their faces they took off running. They ran back to the village to tell everyone what had happened, and everyone in turn came running back to see.
Fear seized them all. What kind of power is this? And who's next? What does this mean for us all? Get this man, this Jesus, out of here. This is too much. This has gone too far. But I, I didn't want him to leave. I wanted to go with him. The one who had changed my life. But it was not to be, yet. He directed me back to my own people to tell them, Gentiles like myself, no less, just how much the Lord had done for me. And I am here to tell you too that this same Jesus, who took what I could not handle and did with it what I could not do, has found you and comes to you with the same mercy that he gave to me. I'm fascinated by this means of telling and sharing the gospel story. We wanted to give you just a moment to reflect on your own about what you've seen and heard. So just a thought for you to think about. Uh, once Jesus cast the demons out of this man, he sat clothed and in his right mind. He was healed, forgiven. A word of forgiveness from God casts out demons. I invite you to take just a few moments uh, in silence together and think about and pray about what word of forgiveness do you need to hear today? What word of forgiveness do you need to hear today? The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty 
things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forever. Spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time for Holy Communion so you can get your uh, communion kits handy and we will open them together in just a moment. If you're at home, you can get your bread and wine or grape juice prepared. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words as you open your kits and receive communion, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May 
Thanks be to God.